Uh, as Wendy said, I'm the Acting Director of Communications and Visitor Experience here at MPS Chesapeake Gateways. Um, I love being here. It's been an exciting. I've been here for just about a year, unbelievably, but um, uh, just a lot of work and a lot of exciting things that are happening here. I've been with the National Park Service for well over 15 years. I've worked at eight different national parks and one regional office, and uh, primarily I've been focused on public communications um, and non-personal services. So things like museum exhibits, wayside signs, brochures, a lot of the things we're gonna talk about today actually. So coming into this project immediately as, as soon as I joined uh, the team here uh, was very exciting. So as Wendy mentioned at the beginning of this, this is kind of a new thing and we're really uh, blazing a new trail uh, for the agency and, and we're excited to do that. We, we uh, recognize that the execution has to be right in order for us to be successful, but um, this is our first step in, in that process and we're excited to share that with you today. Um, the first thing I want to do though is, is really get everybody back on track. It's been a little while. I appreciate everybody's uh, patience and the fact that we had to delay our meeting last um, a couple of weeks ago and, and coming back together this week. And, uh, but we're going to tear off of the April chat. And to review, um, we're really working on this reviewing, rebuilding, refreshing, refocusing, rebranding, and reconnecting uh, the Chesapeake Gateway's core network. And we want to ground ourselves in our founding legislation. You know, Chesapeake Gateways is aiming uh, to once again be a network of places and partners providing opportunities to enjoy, learn about, and help conserve the Chesapeake Bay and its 41 million acre watershed. We are back and we're actively working to rebuild that core network as originally envisioned 25 years ago to create a collective uh, a 21st century national park partnership uh, with a wonderful mix and range of places and partners that highlight the best of the watershed and the full stories of the Chesapeake region. So today uh, we're here to really talk about um, the, the rebranding and how that, that affects uh, this process. And I wanted to bring this slide back again from our last conversation back in April and just remind everybody, what are we talking about when we say the Chesapeake, Chesapeake Gateways core network? We're talking about the places and partners as defined in our, our framework document. So here you can see, and if you haven't had a chance to see the framework document, I'm sure somebody from our team can put a link to it in the chat. It's on our website, and I highly encourage anyone who hasn't had a chance to take a look at it to please do. Um, at its core, the Chesapeake Gateways Core Network is made of the places and their partners. We have six major types of places associated with Chesapeake Gateways. Gateways communities, gateway sites, water trails, heritage areas, landscape networks, land-based routes and trails, and public water access sites. Alongside the, the place-specific partners, the network structure also includes programmatic partner partners and network-wide partners. And these partners relate to the entire network or they have a programmatic theme and focus that relates to our strategic aims, which um, are laid out in our strategic plan. So hopefully that's a, a good refresh of where we've been, what we've talked about over the last couple of months, the things that we've been working on and where we've been grounding ourselves in this process and, and our foundational uh, role. Let's talk about rebranding. Uh, and in that part, we, you know, we want to talk about um, the fact that you know, we love this Thomas Point Lighthouse, uh, Shoal Lighthouse uh, logo that was created back in 2000 with the help of the Maryland Office of Tourism. Um, it's a beautiful logo. It served us well for its time, uh, but it has been uh, over 20 years and uh, it is time for a refresh. It's time for something that works better for um, our office, our visitors and our partners. Um, in, so for the, the past three years or so, we've been using this temporary logo and it's, it's really, a very simplified version of the, the application of the MPS brand um, uh, strategy or brand guidelines. And while we were using that, we started the process of developing a new branding and a new uh, uh, vision or, or visuals for the, the network, uh, the core network. 
So in early 2022, uh, MPS Chesapeake began a broad effort to develop a comprehensive brand strategy. The effort included contracting consultants uh, to work with MPS Chesapeake and our partners. We did this with the support of our friend and contributor, Jody Kauser, who is with the Chesapeake Conservancy, who we could not do have done any of this stuff without. She has been uh, a wonderful resource for us and has connected us with some really great uh, outside third party uh, experts in these fields to help us get to where we are today. Uh, this initial effort began with a, a co company called uh, Yes And or Beyond Definition. I can't remember which name they've moved to now, but um, uh, these incredibly talented folks started uh, us on the right foot by talking to a broad group of stakeholders and partners. And these first steps provided our teams, uh, our team with a brand finding and insights report which laid the groundwork for all of the effort over the last year. Everything we do has been grounded uh, in this brand insights report. And this report uh, tells us a lot of two things really, really made it clear. The old logo was not working and partners want, wanted an explicit visual connection to the MPS brand for a lot of the reasons that you all mentioned earlier in your triads, as well as in the chats. For me personally, as the person asked to lead this project for the MPS Chesapeake Gateways, uh, this quote uh, has been my yardstick against, I've, against which I've tried to measure all of our work over the last year. All survey and interview respondents agree that the old Gateways logo needed replacement, needs replacement, with nearly all respondents pointing to the need to visually connect the CBGN logo with the greater NPS brand. So it was really clear that we wanted to more closely associate this program and the efforts of our partners with the NPS brand. What wasn't clear was how we would do that because there was no roadmap. And as I mentioned earlier, we are blazing a new trail. In order to understand uh, that process and how we've gone through this, I wanna share a little bit more about the NPS brand. The MPS brand is founded or, or centered on three core values, authenticity being the first one. Parks and programs of the National Park Service are varied and diverse, but work toward a common mission. We have duty, a common mission we have a duty and honor to represent. Culture, together our identity represents what we claim to be and everyone that has served for the MPS for all time. And third, discovery. The MPS brand is rooted in the foundation of clear standards and guidelines, yet agile enough to flow like water across that base level of understanding. And with those uh, three foundational values, the MPS has built a large, uh, a very large brand that is very identifiable to a lot of folks. We talked about one of those elements earlier and that is the MPS uh, logo or the arrowhead as it is known. It features elements that are representative or intended to be representative of the mission of the National Park Service, the things that we preserve and protect for the use and enjoyment of this and future generations, uh, including the arrowhead representing the cultural history of the United States and, and this land uh, we are, are protecting. Uh, the mountain range, the trees, the wildlife, and the water resources represented by the lake. This has been the primary visual identity of the agency. It was actually born out of a $20 employee competition in 1951 and has developed and been revised over time into the five options you see there. Those are really the only options. There are some other minor uh, options to uh, use the arrowhead for very specific mission related needs. But for the most part, these are the five options that are made available to us as a, a program or parks of the National Park Service. So of course, not the only thing uh, that folks know us for, probably second most to the arrowhead or in some cases more identifiable than the arrowhead is of course our uniform. And more specifically, uh, the 
mountain peaked ranger hat, the flat hat as we refer to it as. Uh, the uniform again continues the brand uh, that people recognize the uh, uniform as uh, one of the most recognizable elements of the National Park Service. Um, you know, frequently Smokey Bear gets related back to the National Park Service because of the hat he wears, although he's not uh, technically a park ranger, but uh, it's one of those elements that uh, always grounds us in our brand identity. Beyond that, we have graphic standards uh, from elaborate symbols and styles of the MPS sign program and cartography to the park brochures bearing one of the most effective methods of information architecture, the grid system, which we call a unigrid. Uh, the, graphic, the MPS graphic identity program is crafted with clear purpose and intentional appearance. And you can see some of the many things that that has to be applied to. We have unique cartography, our digital media exhibits, uh, the, the publications that we do, the signs that we do, the arrowhead itself, waysides, all of these uh, elements contribute to the larger National Park Service brand. So how do we uh, relate to that? To, to accomplish bringing the elements of the MPS brand forward to our partners and to this network, we went through a lot of different iterations. The first iteration was to create a unique standalone logo uh, to replace uh, the old logo with you know, updated color palettes, updated um, styling, and to make it more of a modern look. Um, this was our, our first <laughs> caught rejected idea. Um, it was a, um, uh, so it represented a contemporary aesthetic and really what we were relating was a color palette closer to the MPS brand. Um, but the application options were too limited. And we tried to marry this up more with those MPS brand elements we talked about earlier. It wasn't working and it really wasn't achieving what we ultimately wanted to do. So that's on, on one end of the spectrum. And on a whole other end of the spectrum, we could have move to uh, what is called an NH, what is called a signature. And this is just unveiled and just released for the use of our national heritage area system. And so this was another option that we considered uh, to follow the established MPS signature option used by uh, not only the national heritage area system, but this is also used by the MPS um, concessionaires. So private companies that run uh, ferry services or hotels or other concession operations within national parks also have a signature option that looks very similar to this. Again, we felt this option was too limiting uh, as it did not allow us to create a distinct visual identity uh, for the core network to properly promote it inside and outside of national parks. The, these rejected uh, ideas gave us additional clarity of purpose, resulting in working directly with the MPS brand management team at the Harpers Ferry Center and our Washington service office, and separating the key visual development from our larger strategic communications plan development. Again, with the help of Jody Kauser and the Chesapeake Conservancy, we were able to identify a wonderful graphic artist and designer, um, Scott Combs. And Scott worked through several options and iterations that were presented to the MPS brand management team, uh, which resulted in our new bird mark. I do wanna take a quick moment, a quick aside, and to talk a little bit about um, what a word mark is, because maybe that's a term that you're not familiar with or you haven't used before in the past. I know several folks on our team, that was something we had to work through. So what is a word mark? I'm gonna take a little bit of presenter's prerogative here, and I'm gonna utilize um, my alma mater, Clemson University. You may know this logo, you may not, but Clemson University's primary logo is the tiger paw. Uh, this is a, a very famous logo in that it was a painted tiger's paw that they printed onto a piece of paper, and you can notice, you might notice the little C that was naturally there at the bottom of the paw. And with that, uh, the paw print logo was born. So this 
logo is used throughout Clemson University in its academic as well as in its athletic world. Uh, oh, we got a lot of Clemson people on board. All right, I'm, I'm with it. I love it. That's great. So this is uh, Clemson's uh, never noticed a C before. That's great. Yeah. So the little C there is, is one thing. I'll also give you a little insight. The, the reason the paw is at the direction that it is, it's pointing toward one o'clock on a clock face, which is the traditional starting time of Clemson football games uh, back before the TV era. So another little clue in there for you if, you, if you're interested. Uh, in addition to their primary logo, Clemson University uses uh, a word mark. So you can see this is a unique color palette, font face, and of course they've, in, they've incorporated, in this case, their actual uh, logo into uh, their word mark. In some applications, they're only, you're only able to implement elements of your primary logo into your word mark. But the essential idea is, if you think about trying to put this uh, logo in a horizontal application, it doesn't really work. And so a lot of times what we do is create what the, we create these word marks so that we have the option for horizontal um, applications. Uh, Clemson has a whole bevy of their brand is, is rather large, as I'm sure every university in the country uh, is. And uh, they have options to modify or clarify what that word mark is representing. And in this case, that word mark represents the whole university. And so when they are trying to um, share uh, that, but maybe they're working in a space that they're not normally in, they do have an option to add that clarity by adding university at the bottom. Within Clemson University, there are a lot of departments and programs and, and things, just like within the National Park Service, there are a lot of programs and parks and different things. And so they have a word mark option for each of the schools or colleges within the university at large, where they're able to use the primary logo with a word mark that again uses the color palette and the, the font uh, to uh, execute that. And then finally, uh, they have a unique branding and word mark for the athletic program. So again, you can see as you work through all of this, there are elements of, of the brand carried throughout uh, the word mark, and that is uh, what we were intending to do with our word mark. And we went about it in a little bit of a unique way, because one of the things we were uh, made aware of very early on in working with the brand management team is that use of the full color arrowhead or those five arrowhead options I showed earlier, use of the full color version of that was not going to be able to be used uh, for our word mark. And so we had to kind of go a different direction and we had to develop a complementary color palette that then could be brought back to work with the arrowhead. So without any further ado, no big drum roll or anything like that. This is the Chesapeake Gateway's new word mark. This is the primary word mark. Uh, there are lots of different applications that we're going to go through in just a moment, um, but we started with just the word mark so that we can show you all of the different applications that can be done with it. When we were developing this, we really wanted to highlight the gateways portion of this. The core network is about opportunities for visitors to experience the Chesapeake. These are gateway opportunities, right? These are ways that visitors can walk through and have those experiences. And not to lessen the Chesapeake, but we know that we're in a very busy space regarding Chesapeake. So we really wanted to highlight gateways. And then we wanted to have something unique, right? We wanted something that would stand out and something that can carry throughout our branding. And so you may notice that the slides have changed a little bit from the earlier slides. And if you look at those A's, there in gateways, what we envision those as is uh, paths, trails, or water trails leading from a starting point off into the distance or into the horizon. And we've been able to carry what we call, we call that the perspective path. And we're carrying that through all of our branding. So you may notice in the corner there of the um, 
the slides, we've carried that uh, perspective path throughout our visual identity. For the primary uh, word bark and application, there are several options uh, for us to use. Uh, you'll notice that we've chosen a distinct muted blue, and it probably is a little small on your computer, and I apologize for that. I wanted to show everything at once, but we actually were able to get permission from the National Park Service's brand management team to develop a blue arrowhead logo, something that is unique to Chesapeake gateways while still being true to the visual identity of the National Park Service. And by doing this, it allows us to give our partners the opportunity to use the arrowhead uh, at their locations and within uh, their uh, um, uh, products. And, and we'll talk more about how that will happen. Uh, these are the, the primary options. So we have um, the word mark, as I mentioned, we have the word mark with the arrowhead lockup. We have horizontal versions and of course a stacked version. And then we have um, in addition to the blue options, we have a black option. And of course, we have a white or knockout option that you can see on your screen to the right hand side. Now, these options will be seen in our newsletters, our brochures, the waysides, websites, mobile apps, and other projects and products funded by MPS Chesapeake Gateways or created by our office directly. There are options, however, for members of our core network to uh, utilize a unique branding, a unique mark for them, their, uh, their sites and their relationships to uh, gateways, uh, the Chesapeake Gateways Network. And so you can see the options that we have here, again, going back to our conversations that we had uh, back in April, where different sites were able to identify their relationship to the core network. You have an option to um, utilize uh, the MPS arrowhead, the word mark, and the unique identifier uh, showing how you relate to um, the Chesapeake Gateways core network and the National Park Service. And so there'll be some brand, uh, some guidelines as to how you're able to use this. But um, once we have those in place and agreements in place, you'll really, for those, um, Folks, you'll, you'll have a lot of flexibility in how you apply this and use this in order to communicate to your visitors and your partners and um, your other stakeholders that uh, you are uh, connected with the National Park Service and what that means um, as a brand and as a, as a, um, a service. We did want to also make sure that there were uh, additional options to uh, show that without the arrowhead, the arrowhead as I mentioned before, comes with a lot of uh, restrictions and a lot of careful management uh, by the National Park Service um, of all of our intellectual property, um, but the arrowhead more, more than anything else. So we did wanna make sure that we also had an option available to you all that allows you to use in um, uh, even more flexibility uh, and, and options to lock up with your organization or your site logos. And that's what this option represents here, where you still have the National Park Service represented through our um, uh, one of our brand fonts in National Park Service you see up there. And then again, the word mark and your unique identifier uh, for each of the sites. So again, like I said, not uh, nothing huge, no drum roll, no confetti or anything like that, but we're very excited to roll these out. We hope that you all will enjoy them and, and find ways to, to use them to um, show your connection to the National Park Service, to the Chesapeake Gateways program, and to help your visitors uh, find all these amazing places and experiences. We know that there are a lot of questions, and I want to um, shout out again, uh, Megan uh, Bacco, about talking about the execution and we recognize that and and this is the first step and we do have some some more steps um, to go through so I do want to just briefly talk about a little bit of where we are as far as the rollout and the use and when these things will start to show up and you'll start to see these and have access to these so as far as rollout is concerned, we're starting with this presentation. We wanted to give our partners an opportunity to see this first before anyone else. Um, and, um, and that's what we're doing today. 
we'll start rolling out the primary word mark in um, newsletters, uh, in the newsletter, like the one that you received that gives you the information about this, um, uh, this, this webinar, this monthly webinar. Uh, and you also start to see it in our Unigrid and some other uh, present uh, products that the office is presenting and, and rolling out, uh, whether they be reports or, or other applications. We're working with a couple of partners um, and a, a small working group to do some initial rollout of uh, the brand. And then uh, as we prepare for the broader core network rollout, we do need to finalize that new core network intake process. So once we have that finalized, Oops, my last one was not there. Uh, once we have that last uh, that process finalized, then the partner word mark will roll out for everyone um, to use uh, with the use guidelines and everything like that. Um, how that's gonna, what that process is gonna look like? There'll be formal agreements. Um, there are four different options to relate to Chesa NPS Chesapeake Gateways. Uh, general agreements, cooperative agreements, technical assistance agreements, and of course, the grants uh, that we have. Uh, once one of those agreements is in place, uh, we'll do a use needs evaluation. So we'll work together um, between the communications and visitor experience team and each partner uh, to determine the appropriate res uh, resources uh, that need to be provided to you, not only the word mark, but also things like the Unigrid, um, and that, that's the mapping guide, um, website listings, other things uh, to that nature. And then finally, um, application support. So after you've gotten access to these brand uh, elements and, and visual identity resources, uh, we're here to help. We're here to make sure that you have uh, the tools necessary to, to uh, apply these uh, to the best effective way. So if you need assistance with that, we're here uh, for you, and uh, we're, we're happy to provide that assistance throughout this process. <clears throat> Oops, didn't show up. Okay, more to come. Uh, like I said, WordMark will start to appear on the digital resources, including newsletters, emails, PowerPoints, uh, the website, and the mobile apps um, in, in June. At the end of this month, we're super excited that our new website should be rolling out. Uh, within the next two weeks, so sometime toward the end of June, early July, our all new website will be rolling out and some of this uh, visual identity will be carried over onto that platform. And then in July, we do hope to have our new Chesapeake Gateways uh, brochure uh, will be available for places and partners to provide to their visitors. So we're getting those printed and we'll, we'll have a process to get those out to everyone um, as they need. And sometime this fall, uh, we hope to have our welcome welcome packets, partner word marks, style guides, and brand resource reference guides out to all of our partners and um, ability for you to begin uh, using the word mark and the branding uh, to communicate your relationship with MPS Chesapeake Gateways. Uh, and with that, I'm uh, that's everything I've got for you all. And um, I just want to thank you all for for your attention and your interest. And, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that anyone uh, may have.